Well, good morning, late good morning. Uh, yes, my name is Geir Andersen, uh, and I work at something called Samordna Optak in Norway, which, if we were to translate it into English, would be what you see on the board, the Norwegian Universities and Colleges Admission Service. Uh, colleges here is the tertiary education, not high school, but tertiary education, so it's the university sector. I will tell you something about the Norwegian system. Um, this is my second visit to the Netherlands. I traveled here as a boy. My, my father was a Philips man. He always went to Eindhoven one or two times each year, came back with a box of chocolate bought at the airport in Oslo when he came home, but still. Uh, <laughs> and the only thing I can remember from my visit was a, a trip to Madurudam or something. <laughs> it made an impression on the young kid. And now it's payback time. I want to give you something, this uh, uh, peek into the Norwegian heart of Nor Norwegian bureaucracy. <laughs> so I hope you'll like it. <laughs> Okay, first of all, this is the organization in which I work. Uh, you see centrally here, admission service, that's me. I'm running the daily operations for the admission service. We are about seven or eight people. Um, we also have in-house developers, so we don't go out to, to hire people. We have them in-house. This is the Delta group. Also seven or eight people that work for us. So we give them assignments, what to develop, and they do it. And here, assessment, that means uh, that's an evaluation unit. Uh, they are experts on upper secondary education from all over the world. So uh, they evaluate all the applications from Nepal, Ghana, the Netherlands, wherever. There's not enough skills out on the universities and colleges themselves to do that. So the, this is the central office who does it. And you will understand better, maybe later, their place in the system. Um, above the managing director, there's a board this board and members are picked by the Ministry of Education. Uh, and all this, uh, and the rest, rest of this organization, which name is in short, is FSAT, and in reality is so long, I hardly remember what it stands for, but they make, <laughs> they make mainly the Norwegian student information system. There's mostly one system in Norway now, after the other one has been squeezed out over the years. So this, this system then deals with the students after they have been enrolled and all they do during their years at the campus. Uh, yeah. This is a map of Norway. Um, it is here to illustrate a few things. One thing is what is going on now. This is what my world looked like from my office desk in 2013. Quite a few, like 40 in all uh, universities and university colleges that got their services from us. And in 2018, it will be much reduced if all goes according to plan. And the reasons are that there are, they are merging all the time. The, most of these universities in Norway are public and the ministry has said that they should merge, they want stronger, bigger units. So the number of institutions will be reduced. If we had had a picture here from like 1990, there would not have been like these number of dots, there would have been 150. So there was uh, in 1994, there was a big, many, many university colleges merged, uh, and that was to get them more efficient. 
today this merging going on now is to raise the quality of uh, the study programs and the, the teaching they give. So, yeah, this is what's going on. These are my people, then these are the people we have contact with. Uh, in um, our admission service, only uh, there are only undergraduate study programs that we deal with. Uh, Postgraduate study programs are administered by each university themselves. Uh, the universities want us to have a central admission service for postgraduate study programs as well. Uh, the ministry just have not had enough time yet to decide how to do it and what to do. And there will also be some other kind maybe of... Uh, of programs as a tertiary vocational programs from a half a year to two years, maybe it will be our job to coordinate that in a way as well. So in the future we may grow and have more and more study programs in our portfolio. Yes, well the short history then. Uh, in the 80s, I believe in Norway, as in many other parts of the world, there was a, a big growth in the number of people applying for university studies. And in Norway, there was not a, any good system to know how many people were actually applying. If there were 100 people in a waiting list in Trondheim for an engineering program and 100 in Oslo, nobody knew if that was the same 100 people and, or if there were 200 in all. So it was hard for the ministry to, to know how much resources to put in to have all, all the applicants uh, in on the study program. They, they didn't know, they lacked some numbers. So they decided they wanted better statistics and they wanted a more efficient way of doing admissions. So they set up a board who recommended a model, not just to get better statistics then, but as it said, to make the process more effective. And there was a pilot project in 1994, and in 1995 we started. That was the first year when all the university, the public university colleges in Norway, and also some of the private ones, had one common uh, admission service and one system. The universities was under other laws, the, the real universities, other laws and other regulations, but they were changed. So in 1997, they were full members as well. Um, it wasn't that easy to get the universities on board. I have to say that some of the bigger ones didn't really believe that the small university college uh, in for example, northern or western Norway, could do the job they should do within this system. They didn't think they were clever enough, had good enough people, so they thought it, this might go all wrong. Uh, this fear disappeared after a few years, and they understood that all pe people were equally uh, eager and equally well, well prepared all over Norway to, to start this common admission service. There has not been any real change since. There has been a change in technology since 1997, how we do things, but no change in what we do. Hardly any. And I will tell you what we do. This is this advisory group. They had this as a goal. Uh, if you apply for a study program, undergraduate study program, one or more in Norway, there should always be only one application. Uh, in 1992 or 1993, if you wanted to apply to 10 university colleges, you had to send an application to each of them. Um, and in reality, if you really wanted to, to, to apply broadly, you could send papers to like 100 if you wanted to. And we, they said there should be only one application. 
and we should limit the number of uh, study programs you could apply for. The second thing, which is not that common, I guess, is they said there should also only be one case handler. This means that if a student or a, an applicant want to apply for study programs at 10 different universities, one of the universities are responsible for the case handling and the assessments, the evaluations for all of the universities applied for. So therefore you have to trust each other then. And this reduces the amount of case handling by a large factor because at that time um, each student applied for 7.7 .7 study programs and they could maybe be handled by, well, up to 10 different universities and often two or three or four and it's a waste of time. And it should also be said that this advisory group that set up the, the proposals for the new system, as they also proposed that the ministry should set all the qualification criteria and uh, all the rules for how you rank students. And that was done. So uh, there's no freedom at all for any public uh, university or university college in Norway to decide themselves what should be the qualification criteria for this particular study program. They can ask the ministry to have new rules, but they can't set them themselves. And usually uh, the thinking in the ministry is that study prog programs that are very much alike should have the same entrance qualifications. Uh, for example, if you want to study nursing, the qualifications requirement should be the same all over Norway. There should not be one university or university college which differs, which also makes it easier for the applicant to, to get an overview of all the rules. Uh, now, there are signs that the ministry wants to loosen up this and give more power for, for, for setting qualification requirements back to the universities and university colleges. But still, there, it has to be in a regulation set by the ministry. And they want it to be only that you should get only one offer in the old system before we were coordinated. People could say, yes to a study place at 10 different places and you didn't really know which one they chose before they turned up or more rightly before they did not turn up at the beginning of the semester. Then you knew you could give the free place to some other people. Uh, but here you get only one offer and that's it and you have to decide if you want it or not. And then the effect of that is freeing up places for people who don't uh, well, if you say yes to your uh, second priority study program, um, you automatically, uh, the number three, four, five, six, and seven are erased and you can't get in there anymore. Uh, so you free up a place for, on those study programs for other people, even if you have enough points to get in. The application process, uh, I think it's not that different from what you have in the Netherlands, this first step, authentication. There's a national electronic ID that people use to log into the system. We maintain the website where you go in, you get the information about all the study programs or link to the, the university's web pages where you can read about them, uh, information on the universities. Uh, themselves and on our website you can log in to your application and you do that via a national EID. Uh, nowadays at first it was one national ID, uh, a public solution. Uh, now you log on into a portal where you can choose between private and public uh, electronic IDs. 
that there are four at the moment, and there will maybe be five or six. So now you can use the same process as when you go into your bank account to, to, to log in here to apply. That's the first step. When we get this authentication from the ID portal, they give us this uh, national identification number for the person. Uh, and we go to the national registry and pick up the name and address. So the applicant don't have to type that in. Uh, and we go to um, something new for us this year. There's a, a national contact and reservation re register where we get the email addresses and mobile phone numbers f from the applicants. So they don't put that in either. We get it from a central source. Um, and it works out well. Uh, some people don't have email addresses or mobile phone numbers in, the, it's in this uh, national registry. And then we have to communicate with them on paper, but that's a small percentage. It's really no big job. Uh, I believe um, of Norway's soon to be five million inhabitants, close to four million have emails and mobile phone numbers in that. And that means that those missing is mostly very young people. Uh, we also have a national database for upper secondary school leaving certificates. So we also get that from this data bank and show it to the applicant. This is the documentation we have on you. And quite a few of the applicants have only this for the entrance. They are 19 years old and that's all that they have had time to do so far is to, to finish up a secondary school. Actually, what we do is that we pre-run a test each night for all the school certificates that is in this database to see which study programs they qualify for. So when the applicant goes into the system and tries to pick a study program, we can inform him that you, we can see already that you are qualified, you meet the entrance requirements, or we can see that you are not, so you better have some other documentation if you want to apply for it. Um, I'll go one step back. Uh, this, uh, these school certificates is also a, a great help in, in um, the uh, case handling. Also, there's automatic case handling. It also goes during the night to, to calculate points and, and calculate qualifications. I'll come back to that. Uh, basic entrance uh, requirements, uh, there is something in Norway called the basic entrance requirement, which, which is the requirements that is most common if you want to go to an undergraduate study program. And the law says that if you've once been advocated basic entrance, it has been said that you have the basic entrance requirements, then you can enter any undergraduate study program which has uh, enough places. So we have a database now with like one million Norwegians is in there and we present this document for them as well when they apply to tell them we have, you have these basic entrance requirements. Then we pick up what they have of higher education. This is new this year. Uh, it doesn't work really well. It will work well next year. This year it doesn't work well. But if uh, the applicant gives his or her consent while they apply, then we go and pick up uh, all the results from higher education in Norway from each uh, of the higher education institutions. Uh, it has been, uh, a job has been done on beforehand, so we know which applicant has results from which higher education, but we don't sit on the results themselves. But as soon as the applicant gives his or her consent, we get the real results from higher education and present it for them in the application so that they can see what we have. The person has to register all the relevant personal details. I will not go into details about 
all the laws and regulations for the admission. I can tell you there's a lot. You have to know a lot to understand how the system works. I mean, there are different quotas and there are exceptions and exceptions to exceptions and so on ad infinitum. I won't go into that. Uh, military service, I've said that just because I was in a loss for words. But uh, you, you calculate a point score uh, for the applicant. And if you've had military service and gone to what in Norway is called something like Folk High School or civil service, then you can get two extra points. And we, if they have applied before, we show them that they have these fully two points so they don't have to document them once again. Uh, then the, when all this is done and shown to the applicant, they add the study programs. Uh, they can write up, uh, up to 10 study programs. Uh, they usually, it's in the area between five and six usually, but up to 10 in a prioritized order. So they put at top the, the study program they most want to, to begin with. And in this system, uh, there are, this year there are like 42 or something uh, universities and university colleges, and there are about 1,300 different study programs to choose from. And also new, uh, new for us, uh, I believe I have a feeling we're the last country in, in uh, the world who has started with documentation upload. I mean, we've, now we have shown the applicant all things we've got. They don't have to worry about that. We will take care of that information in a good way. But if you have something in addition, you can upload documentation yourself. And it has to be said also that we open up for application at February the 1st, and it's open till April the 15th each year. Uh, after we've had the first selection round, it, uh, the universities will see that there are quite a few courses you don't have enough uh, applicants to fill all the seats. Then we open up for a new round of the 1,300, maybe between four and 600 study programs are now put out there on the market again. And if, if you have applied uh, earlier the year or have not applied earlier, this is now open for, for a new. So uh, the sa same system, we just open up again for a period of time to get new applicants. And of course, it's possible to change the application as you go along. You cannot add new study programs after April the 15th, but you can change the priority or delete study programs and, or whatever you like. Um, the assessment, the evaluation, like I said at the beginning, for each applicant, uh, assessment of the, the qualifications and calculation of scores is done by one institution on behalf of the others. And then there's this, all these exceptions. The main exception being that if your education up a secondary school is from outside the Nordic countries, then there will not be a university who assesses your application. It will be people at my neighbor office at uh, Newcastle. Uh, other exceptions as well. Uh, and this assessment process, no, except for, for the people from, from outside Norway, of course, is highly automated thanks to this database for leaving certificates from the upper secondary school. To, yeah, thank you. And it can also be said then that Newcastle uh, we have a responsibility to make sure that all these universities, the people working there, do the job in the same way. So we pro provide manuals and hold seminars to, to make sure that it doesn't matter if you're handled by the university college in Kautokaino or the University of Oslo, the result will be the same. Um, the, we have many selection rounds. The main one is in the middle of July. 
uh, and then we continue. We have about 15 selection rounds to a new and a new and a new to put new, new people in as long as the university or university colleges themselves think it's safe for the student to, to begin at the study program that late. So till the beginning of September. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs>